Good morning. Happy Monday. This girl did not move very fast this morning, as you can tell. It's okay. It's a rainy day. We get a slow start sometimes on Mondays. <laughs> we'll catch up. <laughs> so I'm a little late today. So I'm waiting for whoever wants to join me. Let's do some playground time. Let's have some fun. It's all about expecting miracles today, and I'll continue to repeat myself as everyone comes into the room. <laughs> I'm all about expecting miracles. I'm all about looking at the world through a different set of eyes. How about you? Let's see if I can be good. And I see five. You guys are right on it. You've been waiting for me to get to the playground. Who got to the playground before me today? <laughs> Who's been swinging as you wait? You're like, I'm in the sandbox. I don't see her. <laughs> Where did she go? I'm sorry. I have um, some days I just can't shake it out that well. <laughs> Today was one of those days. Hi, Charlie. I see six. I'm not sure who's here, but I see six. So good morning. Mon happy Monday morning to everyone. I hope that you had a nice weekend. I hope that you spent some time doing things that were special to you this weekend. Hi, Sue Phillips. Good morning. Having an emergency. Mm, we don't want to start that already on a Monday morning. Good morning, Gerilyn. Lots of... Lots of healing energy coming your way, Sue. I hope that, oh, you've got the hurricane stuff going on down in Florida, too. So I hope that's, I hope that's relieving itself at some point soon. I haven't checked the weather yet this morning down there. Charlie, how are you this morning? Good morning. Happy Monday. Who else, who else needs to expect some miracles? <laughs> Sometimes we have to change our, our focus. Things seem really scary, and the ego goes immediately to fear. And my ego can get so triggered sometimes <laughs> and so I totally get it I'm just like everyone else <laughs> Deborah good morning hi Carol Ann good morning so my focus is this morning and every morning and during the night it was going on too I actually had <laughs> visitors last night as I was resting I felt them you ever when you've got things going on in your life I had we all have our rituals these things that we do you're good good Charlie um, here, but Mary said, Sue, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're hurting. We'll all focus some energy in the direction of Sue Phillips. She's having a rough time again. So, really, really want to lighten that energy for you. All is well with Gerald Ann. Barely any rain. Good. A little wind. Dodge the bullet again. Yeah, yes, you are blessed because I think we actually got it here. <laughs> it was storming big time here last night while I was sleeping. I don't know. Like the wind picked up suddenly and the thunder was blunt and I slept all the way through it. I was like, I'm not even, like if I even had any fear coming to the building last night, I just, I, I'll tell you what I did. Yes, Geraldine sending love your way too soon. Um, when, um, when I have things come up, I've learned to refocus, to find a way to take this little ego and say, no, everything's okay. <laughs> like stop stop um i have to tell my ego to step aside or to take a break to to not just immediately go to fear mode because fear mode we're super powerful and so fear mode brings us into that place of bringing more of that negative stuff i don't want any negative stuff in my world so i'm really ready to pop out of 3d anytime now <laughs> like i'm getting a little impatient <laughs> how many of us are getting impatient we're like okay we've been working at this for a while the world is I won't cuss, but the world is a mess. It's a disaster right now. And so, um, for many of us, I know we came here, we volunteered to help, help humanity get through this difficult time. I'm starting to have this part of me that's like, okay, when? <laughs> when? When? When do things lighten up? And the news is not lighting, lightening up at all. Um, things can be really scary, so... Sending prayers and love to Sue. Sue, you got all kinds of support. I love this little group that gathers with me because there are these um, warriors. They're all, all of you are warriors for one another. You really stand up and you get out there and you um, start sending out that beautiful energy and lifting one another up. So thank you for that. So isn't that what it's all about? It's changing our focus. Learning to look at, okay, I can't fix that, but what can I fix today? What do I need to fix today? Am I really still stuck? Are those things real or are they just a smokescreen to try to pull me back into 3D, to try to make me feel scared? I choose 
I choose to stand in my own power. And that came in very fully last night as I was sleeping. I actually heard Archangel Raphael. <laughs> that was really funny. I think it's funny when we take the time to really get to know the angels, the way that they um, will work with us, the way that they'll actually, you know, come through and like, oh, I heard you. That was cool. So I'm getting to know a new angel, Raziel. That's how I say it. I might be wrong. I'm trying to get to know these different names and who to call on in different situations. And you know me in names. I've never been, been big on worrying about specific names for anything. Like whatever I call. Because of my kids, I got so many. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Whatever I... Hey, here's a cutie though. My daughter last night gave me an option of calling her Lyran or Ren. And I'm like, yes, Ren. Okay, thank you. I can, I can do Ren. Ren comes to my head. Lyran doesn't. <laughs> Sorry. So Abby is now Ren. That's a cute little nickname. I like that. So do our names really that important with our angels too? Uh, maybe. Maybe it's important to know which one to call on in certain situations. So Raziel feels very helpful in this new growth period for me and everything that's going on in my world. So I'm going to study that one today. I'm going to study and call him in. So last night I wrote him a note and I stuck it under my pillow right before I went to bed. I was feeling kind of anxious about some things and I was like, all right, let's get some, let's pull some angelic energy into this. We don't have to stay in fear mode. That's the thing. When we stay in fear mode, we draw more negative energy in. We actually have more things to be afraid of. So remember your own power. Remember that you have to step out of fear mode. You have to step out. Three or, um, Fear is really 3D. It's very, very um, stuck. It's lodged in this 3D environment that we live in. And we're trying to move out of 3D. So it requires us to look at what, what energy we're creating. And we're creating our energy through our words, through our actions, and through our thoughts, and through our emotions. Strongly through our emotions. So when we spend a lot of time in a certain emotion, mm, I'm so in love. I love myself. I love the people. I have so many friends. You know, when I start, when I do that, it's like, ah, oh, the energy changes in the room. It does the same thing when we when we focus on a negative, on fear mode, on hate, uh, depression, sadness, grief, all these things. We know it's part of the the spectrum. You know, all those things are part of the spectrum of being human. But when those lower things pop up that come out of fear, can you find a way to refocus? We talk about this often, and I don't think we can talk about it enough. It's refocusing. It's that kaleidoscope going back to the playground. It's like, can I, can I shut off this eye? Can I cover this eye and just put something here that shows me, think about a kaleidoscope as the sun shines through. And as the different shapes, it shines on these different shapes. And, and some are hearts and diamonds and glitters. And it's so beautiful because I've switched my, my fear mode off. And suddenly I'm, I'm seeing beauty all around me again. we got a super rainy day here, thundering all night. I think that the hurricane just blew right up into Tennessee last night. And, uh, and it could be, you know, that could be something that, I could be afraid of. I could sit up all night worrying that a tree is going to fall in the house or you know, lightning is going to strike or something. I could, or that we'll have a horrible windstorm. Instead, I just laid down and went to sleep. And halfway through the night, something must have startled me. And I think I popped into fear mode as I often do, like a deer. It's like, oh, okay, who do I got to take care of? And I felt it. I felt, I reached my hand under the pillow and I felt the note that I put there first. And it reminded me of the angels. And then I had this strange, every now and then I'll feel this, um, something going on in my chest and my heart chakra in the middle of the night. And I used to think, man, am I having a heart attack? <laughs> I can go to those fearful places. It's not a heart attack. I'm breathing. Everything's good. It's just, I really feel like as soon as I felt that this time, I heard, I really heard Archangel Raphael say, it's just me. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, go ahead. You do whatever you're doing. In my sleep, you want to work with my body. You want to heal my body while I'm sleeping. I'm okay with that. I'll just go back to sleep knowing, being comforted by the fact that I am always surrounded by this angelic realm. It's all around me. And I, and as I was laying there, I thought, man, I'm such a child these days. Like, how, how many children will do that kind of stuff? They're like suddenly, they're afraid in the middle of the night and they go to that place of magic 
where they realize that they're so supported that they have an imaginary friend right there with them that's helping them. How often do you think that those imaginary friends were actually angels? Yes, they're spirit guides too, but how often do you think that angels came in close and that child was like playing, really truly playing, hi Luann, truly playing with angels? I do believe it happens all the time. We just don't know. And so it's happening for us too. It's not just for these little kids. Angels love all of us and we're all small children to the angelic realm. We're, we're all just little kids walking around the planet trying to figure out stuff. We're all trying to learn how to walk, you know, truly. And they're always like behind us going, oh, if you fall, I got you. I'm going to catch you. And we're like just running flat out like uh, terrified thinking we're going to fall and that's going to be the end of us. <laughs> we're never coming back again. And we're, we're done. We're goners. <clears throat> and they're just laughing. Oh, you guys are so cute. Hi, Luann. Hi, Christina. <clears throat> so I hope that this helps you today. Hi, Julie Kiss. Um, because it's all about, it's so difficult. I'm not saying it's easy, but the trick is, is to start talking nice to your ego. It's only that little puny ego, that tiny human. <laughs> Do you remember, who was it? Um, the Hulk in that movie where he said puny human and he went, that's us. We're the Hulk. And, and we have this puny human <laughs> wrapped around us that can get scared and, and always be afraid like a little rabbit, like always being hunted. Or we can be like the lion, and we can just be the hunter, and we can come out of out from that fearful place and say, nope, there's nobody. I can move mountains. I can literally, with faith the size, size of a, the grain of a mustard seed, which is pretty dang small, I can move that mountain. So if I've got a mountain in front of me today, nothing's going to stop me from moving that mountain. I'm powerful, and I've learned that. You know, it's not, I, I can fall back into, just like everyone else, I can fall back into that small self that I used to be every now and then. And then I go, oh, you listen to the squealing tires as I stop myself. Hold on. That's not me anymore. That's not me. I know who I am now. I am powerful. I have this very spark of God inside of me. I'm a creator. I helped create. I was a part of the creation of the whole planet. Why would I have to be afraid of that little thing? There's nothing to truly be afraid of. You know, really, the worst thing that's ever going to happen is we're going to die. And we don't die. <laughs> we don't die. So why are we so afraid all the time? It's that ego. Because the ego is trained to save us from the si saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> it goes all the way back there where we had very little resources. And the ego was always, like, pushing us around trying to protect us. The second we stepped out of the Garden of Eden, the ego kicked in. Actually, it kicked in as soon as we decided to step out of the Garden of Eden. And, and it's been very busy ever since, a form of protection. But do you know the second that you stepped out of the Garden of Eden? Yes, it was you, all of us. We were all, we were all a part of that. The second that we chose to step out of that garden, not only did the ego kick in to bring in fear, but the angels kicked in to surround us. We just forgot. We said, okay, we're going to step out of the garden and we don't want... You know, we don't need you guys to protect us. We want the full experience of this life. So, you know, no, we're, we're good all by ourselves. And the angels are like, oh, fine. They go to God and they're like, okay, God, listen. They think, these little children think they're going to be okay in that big scary world without us. So the rule is that we can't help them unless they ask for it. But we, we insist that we go with them. They loved us so much. There was like no way they were going to let us go into that all by ourselves. So they're like, okay, I agree to leave them alone unless they ask for help. That's the rule. And so here we are walking around with the saber-toothed tigers. And suddenly we see that saber-toothed tiger. And we're like, <gasps> we remember, we're like, oh, help me. And then they're like, okay, here, <laughs> here we are. Here we are. We're right here. We didn't go very far away. We're right here. It's okay. It's okay. They're always there. I know I'm speaking like I'm talking to a bunch of children, but this is the playground. <laughs> and you're here in my little playground of children. And, and I'm telling you right now that you can swing as high as you want to swing. That you can climb that ladder up to the high slide. That you can go on the monkey bars. But whatever happens, you're always okay. But, but just ask, okay? As you're going out into that big scary world, ask for, ask for some protection. Those angels, they're around you just as much as they're around me. I can say, oh, let's go into meditation. I'm going to call in the angels for you. But guess what? You can always call in those angels, too. They're right there for you, too. 
they're, they're there for all of us. Some of us are just more uh, experienced in calling on them. We're just more comfortable with it, that's all. You can get comfortable too. So that's my story today. And I, and I tell you these things because I have to tell myself the same things. I'm giving you the same stuff as me because I fall back into the same stuff. I fall back into my fear mode. Sometimes I feel very alone. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to take care of that. I don't want to do this. I really don't. <laughs> like, I'm really tired of having to worry about insurance and registering cars and getting cars fixed and paying bills and, you know, all this stuff, <laughs> taking animals to the vet. And there's so many things. There's so many things that we can get wrapped up in. And the truth is, is that it's not as difficult as it used to be. It's, it's no fun being stuck in a human body. There's so many things. There's so many rules on this planet. There's so many people trying to control everyone else. And so in the process of trying to control everything, we put into place all of these crazy rules. You know, you got to pay this. You got to pay that. You got to, you know, follow this rule or follow that rule. Or you got to... 3D. Luck. I'm tired of it. How about you? Raise your hand. Do you ever get tired of all this 3D nonsense where everybody's trying to try... Okay, wait, let me refocus everyone here. We're all connected. Every one of us is exactly the same at the root. So stop picking on everybody. Stop being so mean. All, all these little bullies out there. Stop trying to make so many rules. Stop trying to, you know, control. Stop trying so hard to control. Can we just love each other? Yes, we look different on the outside. Yes, some have female energy. Some have male. We all actually have both. We're all different. Some different skin tones. I get it. Different sized bodies. Wouldn't matter if we were completely identical. <laughs> Truly. God could have said, you know what? I'm going to make every one of you look exactly the same. And I'm going to give every one of you the exact same stuff. So that nobody has to fight. I used to do that with my kids at Christmas time. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> not going to have anybody fighting over anything. So everybody's going to get exactly the same thing this year. <laughs> it never works. It doesn't work. <laughs> Some kids take care of their toys better than others. <laughs> Some kids just are different than others. Some kids like things that others. Some are more appreciative. Some some will, will take what they got for Christmas and want what the other guys got too, even if they're exactly the same. That's the way the world is put together, isn't it? Everybody is, and people see themselves differently no matter what. We can be completely identical and still the ego would come in and say, but I'm better. <laughs> Or I'm not as good, or I'm, you know, like we all have that filter. So, why are we trying so hard? You know, why? Oh, all right, who else? I'm just going here because I'm, I'm tired. I want to know who else here today is to the point where you're like, oh, I'm so tired of this heavy 3D nonsense. I'm so tired of it. I realize I still have to do it. I realize there's still things that if I don't keep up with certain things that. But you know what I found? That in the shutdown, I completely forgot that I had to even think about those things. <laughs> Vaccinations for kids. Taking animals to the vet. Car registrations. You go, who's been thinking about any of that stuff? <laughs> really, truly. Everything was shut down. Nobody, I put it all on the back burner. I'm not, I'm not even, it's, it's completely beneath my radar. Above, no, beneath my radar now. And so when it when it pops back up to remind me, I'm like, oh, man, is that still happening? <laughs> Are we still supposed to be doing that stuff? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Right there with you on that, Geraldine. Thank you for somebody standing up with me. Let's come on, people. I just want to build a commune. I want to build a place where we can all go. <laughs> where we can all go. Where we can live in a world where everybody just reaches out and love to each other. Where we just... Like, who cares about taxes? Who cares about registering cars? Who cares about any of that stuff? Who ca I don't even care about cars anymore. <laughs> like, I just want to live someplace where I have everything that I need within walking distance so I don't even have to get in the car. <laughs> I, I take a horse. I just, I'll hop on a horse's back. <laughs> I'm going to go back in time a little bit, I think, to something that's simpler. And I want to step out of this need to control. The kids and I were talking about it the other day, the way that the differences. Um, kids these days are going through this. I know this because I have one. This, um, I got stuff going, stop it. Um, this male, female, gender stuff. And 
Am I male? Am I female? Am, it's the pronoun stuff. His, hers, their, them. You know, it, apparently if you're not, if you don't want to be, let me see if I can explain this. If you don't want to be considered either male or female, then you are them or they. And I'm like, mm, that doesn't work for me because it's improper English and I'm all about English. <laughs> so, so I, I have a really hard time. I've got this girl in my house. I brought a girl into the world who doesn't really, she's decided to explore her, their <laughs> gender. You know, like, what am I? What am I? Who am I? Kind of thing. And, I, and more and more kids are doing this, and I just think it must be that we're waking up to the truth of who we are. You know, instead of taking it to a negative place, I literally believe that our children are just more advanced than us, and they're waking up to their truth, and they're realizing that we're all male, female. We all have divine masculine, divine feminine energy within us. It's powerful. It's incredible. Yes, our bodies are built differently. Yes, we bring forth our energy differently. But honestly, in every human, there is the divine feminine and the divine masculine, depending on what you're the most aware of is the direction that you'll go in. And so these kids, they don't want to be just called, they don't want to be limited or put in a box. That's the truth of it. They don't want to be just this or just that. They don't want to be controlled. It all comes down to a control thing. And these children that are coming in now, whether they're, crystal, indigo, I don't, rainbow, I don't know what it is. They are powerful little creators who are tired of all the separation and the judgment and the sorting. They don't want to be sorted out into different sectors anymore. They just want to be. So this person that I have that I brought into the world 13 years ago, she is, they are, <laughs> um, trying to decide the truth. Who am I? Who am I? And I refuse to be stuffed into a box. And there's this huge movement all the way across the planet of these beautiful beings coming into the world and saying, you know what? I don't need pronouns. I don't need adjectives. I am. Aren't they doing the same thing that I taught them to do? That I teach people to do all the time? That we've all been taught to do? That Jesus taught us to do? I am. I just am. <coughs> I. I am. I don't have to be male or female. I don't have to. I can go by any name that I choose. Any title. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. The names don't matter. It's the energy that you're putting forth. What are you putting forth? <clears throat> are you putting forth fear today? Are you putting forth hatred? Are you putting forth judgment? Are you putting forth love? Hmm. Carol Ann, yes, I am. Exactly. Exactly. Gender neutral. Right. It's all about balance and living both aspects of ourselves. Thank you, Geraldine. So it's taken me a struggle I've had to go through because I'm, I, I understand it. She's given me opportunity to spend time, and I still say she, because I brought a little girl into the world. I remember the second she was born going, oh my gosh, look at this beautiful little girl. We're so used to that. It's... You know, I put frilly little outfits on her. I, I'm just as gender, um, what's the word? I know there's a fancy word for it, but I can gender specific as far as my children. And yet I love them no matter what. I'm able to go to that place with them because unconditionally, no matter what, I will always be their mom. And I will always be there to pick up the pieces. I will always be there to support them. And if she goes to a, a parade, you know, for this transgender, whatever she wants to do, I'll be right there beside her. Because even though I have a hard time changing the name, changing the pronouns, because I'm so used to this person being a certain person, and I'm old <laughs> and set in my ways, I am supportive of this person being the being, the incredible, amazing. I can see through to her soul. Ren's soul. I can see through to this amazing being. And I knew that this person had to come into the world. I knew it. No matter how difficult it made life for me. This person was special. When I was pregnant, I heard this one is special. She's going to make people smile. Yes, I heard the word she. And I think I think we have to be forgiving with that too. We're going we're gonna to go to our pronouns. And, and she and I have talked about that. That it's okay for them to go by any pronoun, it's okay, as this person 
goes into the world and wants to be considered somebody different or somebody totally unique and amazing and incredible, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I'm good. So, there's some adjustment. I do get where parents have a difficult time. You know, you feel so proud of this person and you get so used to this person being a certain way. And for so many parents, they think that kids came into the world just to uh, please them or to so that we can live vicariously through them, so that my child can do all the things that I didn't get to do. Well, that's a load of baloney. These kids, they come here to be whoever they came here to be, and we can't control that no more than we can control the flow of the ocean. You know, you might as well just let it happen. Let it happen. And the more you let it happen, the easier it is, trust me. <laughs> I think sometimes they do it just to get a rise out of mom and dad anyway. And when you go, well, okay, that's where you want to be. That's all right with me. I just love you. Then that, that, that thing where they're trying to seek, they're trying to trigger you to see how much you love them. And then you go, yeah, I do. I still love you. Then they go, it releases. They go, okay, all right. She just loves me. I can be whoever I want to be. And there's a comfort in that for her, them. <laughs> and there's a comfort in that for me because... I know that no matter what happens, this person has that security underneath to know that that ability to leap from that solid base, knowing that there is so much love. So, that's me. I haven't always been that easy. Sometimes, I, if she had told me this five years ago, I think I would have been okay. But I think I might have struggled harder with it. I'm more forgiving, more, not forgiving, more open. Open is a better word than I used to be. That's right. We're just walking each other home. You're exactly right. We're just, we're all a soul. And within that, underneath that physical skin, we're all everything. If there's nothing else that you ever learn from me, what Steve showed me was we step out of physical form and we become everything. <laughs> We're in the rainbows and the butterflies and the trees and that when I walk up and hug a big tree, I'm hugging Steve. When I reach down and pick up a butterfly, I let it climb on my hand because it's in the pathway and I don't want it to get hurt. I'm helping Steve. When I, uh, when I see that rainbow, of course that's Steve. Everything. We become everything. That loved one that you miss so much, just look around you. They're everywhere. <laughs> in the sun, in the moon. In the stars, in the dirt, in the rocks, in the trees, in the birds, all of it. They're everything. So, <clears throat> if truly I'm everything, then pronouns shouldn't have anything to do with me. I shouldn't have any kind of title that keeps me from being everything, right? So, Ren is everything. This amazing soul that came into my world. I look at this person and I'm like, ah... You are amazing. <laughs> I can see it shining through you. This amazing, amazing soul. Every one of my kids are like that. And every one of you. I look at you and I'm like, oh gosh, yeah, you, you, you limit yourself sometimes. That's how God looks at us. Yeah, you limit yourself sometimes. But guess what? You're me. <laughs> You're me. You're everything. Take off that, that fear mode. Take off that mask for a little while. Look within. Look inside of yourself. That's why we meditate. It gives us a chance to see the truth of who we are. We're not going in there to to be face first on the ground and 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 like oh, aware that there are stronger powers out there that are trying to crush us that could crush us. We're going in there because we're like we really want to see the truth of who we are. And you will find the truth of who you are, and you'll find that inner strength, and you'll suddenly realize that you can move mountains. That Everything is working together for your own good. Even if it seems like it's a horrible thing, it's still working for you because you are drawing it in and everything that happens, happens because your soul wants to learn from it. So what happens when you learn from that difficult situation? You don't got to do it anymore. <laughs> You're in control. Don't let it, don't go to that place. Don't keep going to that place of fear. Don't keep drawing it in. Because when you draw it in, it, it responds with more. It's like, okay, well, I don't want you to have to go through that, but since you've decided that that's what you want to go through, then we're going to just let you have what you wanted. <laughs> you're asking for it through your energy, through your thoughts, through your emotions. So be careful what you're asking for today. That's all. 
Christina, I think I will try to create something from that phrase today. Perfect. It's the soul. We are just walking each other home. Very good, Christina. Christine. Christine. <laughs> A's and E's look just the same to my eyes. <laughs> I'm not putting in the glasses. I, I do wear them <laughs> sometimes when I have to. I don't want to go for extended periods not wearing them because I, I start to get the migraines. But I'm, but I'm, I'm exercising. I'm, I'm forcing my eyes to focus again. They say you can never get that back. I don't believe that. I believe that we can. I've seen myself become more youthful over time. So I believe that my eyes can become more youthful again. I believe that my eyes can focus again. So that's my stand. So I'm going to keep I'm going to keep exercising them. What happens to us when we stop exercising? We get flabby. Our muscles get all weak. My eyes, I stopped. I started wearing glasses. Somebody told me I had to wear glasses, so I started wearing those glasses. And the more I wore those glasses, the weaker my eyes got. I stopped exercising those muscles. So I am going to force myself. <laughs> I know. An eye doctor will tell me completely different. They're wrong and I'm right. <laughs> this is my world my world I'm completely in control and I decide to have perfect eyesight again so I go I go on about these eyes literally this is what we do inside this body of mine <laughs> these are the conversations that go on inside of here I'm just I'm letting you have an experience of what it's like to live within <laughs> it's a confusing place a little silly so what would we like to do today it's getting late and we need to go ahead and go into that garden and have some fun have some meditation time I didn't do any card readings today. I'm sorry. I didn't even think about it. Would you like, real quick, would you like a group card reading? I can do that for the whole group. We'll do that really fast and then a quick meditation. So hold on. I'm going to do one of these, I think, maybe today. If you guys watch for me and you want to do it, I'll, I'll send out a message. I'm going to go on the Buyer Store for Institute, and I'm going to do card readings today. So anyone who is interested, let's see, what is today? Monday. I think it's a light Monday. I didn't bring my book, but that's okay. <laughs> I think it's a light Monday. At 3.30, we have Carol Allen, who will be coming on at 3.33. Yes! We're so excited. At 3.33, uh, Cheryl Ann and I will be on Silent Mystics, and we will have Carol Allen, who is uh, an amazing human being, an amazing soul. So I can't wait to share that time with her. So I hope you guys will join us on Enlightened Living for that at 3.33. All right, I'm going to kind of tune into everybody's energy. Let's see what we need today. It's probably going to come up exactly what I've already been talking about. How much you want to bet? We're going to do three cards. I'd like three. I like three about everything. We're three people. When we get together, it's three. It's like a solid base. I love threes. This one. And if you guys want to come in, I'll announce the time. Let's see. I wish I had my book with me, but I don't think that I've got anything today until... No, today's a light day. So how about noon? How about noon? We come on the Buyer Store for Institute and we do um, card readings. I'm going to announce that. Maybe 12-12. <laughs> okay, I got three cards for us. I will use the... No, I'm not going to use glasses. Dang it. <laughs> I don't need them for that. <sighs> Ooh, I like that one. These are beautiful cards. And I can see... Oh, gosh. I can see where this is perfect for this group. So I'm sorry. This comes out backwards for you guys. But Surrender to the Divine. And it's a full moon card. And it just so happens to be full moon time. So we're surrendering to the divine in each one of us. Remember that. That divine is within you. Luck is on your side. Look how beautiful that is. Luck is on your side. We're gonna, we'll are gonna we be going into a new moon before long. We'll take that. And then bring love into the situation. So if you're doing past, present, future... Bring love into the situation. We're going to start with that. Bring love into the situation. We were just talking about that. When any time that we feel fear, any time that we feel fear, that we feel less than um, powerful, we're not feeling our superhero status, 
we want to we want to stop because that fear that's coming in is going to bring us into a place of more negative energy and it's going to just start throwing things at us that are like oh my gosh i was afraid of that now i got another one now i'm afraid of this too and i'm afraid of this and pretty soon we're going to be little quivering <laughs> rabbits sitting in the hole so bring bringing love into the situation every time we are going to have that immediate gut reaction we can't help it it just happens we have these trigger points where we're suddenly like you, you, you know when your breath catches you're like oh my gosh that really scares me <laughs> can you for me, sometimes it can be my fear of loss is a big one, and we all have those things. We've been conditioned to have certain fears, so we can go right into something. Like if we think somebody is sick that we care about, <gasps> for me it's like, oh my gosh, am I going to lose? Am I going to lose that? I've lost my home a couple of times maybe, you know. So I, that, the, I have trigger points, so what I have to do is just wrap it in love. Just be like, no, no, little ego, no, no. There is no loss. Yes, Steve stepped away from you, but he never you never lost him. You don't need to go to that place of fear when that happens. It's okay. There is never there is never truly any loss. See what I mean? We bring love in and you start talking nice to yourself. So if you've got something going on right now that's pulling you into a lower vibration, please please refocus. Please close off the fear side and, and open up that little kaleidoscope of love again and look at it through the lens of love. So yes, we already did talk a lot about that. And then we've got luck is on your side. We all love luck. We all love luck if luck is on your side. So it's all, it's all about, it may not be, oh, I'm going to go win the lottery. I don't believe that the lottery even matters anymore. Money doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're coming to a, into a world where there is no counting. There's no more counting. I know it seems as if there is, but when you don't count all the time, the money just flows. And the second you start going, oh, wait, okay, I don't know if I got enough for this. I don't know if I got enough for that. You start counting. You start worrying again. You're pulling that fear back in again. That's all fear-based. Fear so so let's, let's just stand on that today. Luck is on your side today. No matter what's going on, if luck is on your side, everything just rolls in. Luck be a lady. <laughs> just let it, let the beautiful... <clears throat> miracles of life unfold before you know that whatever happens it's only it's only a facade it's not real look into the reflection the reflections down there that's the real part you can move it around these things are hard you can't move them but that reflection is looking at the same thing and you can manipulate it and move it around so I'm gonna change that up I do a lot of lucid dreaming. I've done it since I was a child. I don't want my life to look like that. I don't want my dream to be like that. It's too scary. Let me recreate it, and I would change it. In my sleep, I would change my dream. If I can do that, then I can change my life the same way. I don't, I'm very powerful. I don't like the way that's going. Let me, let me push some energy in a different direction. Let me choose to go off that way, into that path of abundance, into that path of luck where everything just seems to come my way. I enter contests and I just win everything. Can you focus on that? I'm being just lucky, lucky, lucky. You're so lucky today. And then we're surrendering to the divine, aren't we? Just surrender. Surrendering does not mean losing. We, we think surrendering means I surrender, I'm giving up. No. Surrender means I am perfectly safe at all times. I am so protected and I don't need to hold my guard up anymore. I can let it go. I can surrender into this beautiful, beautiful being that I am. I can surrender into the, the idea, the belief that I am a spark of the divine and that I can create at all times. That I'm always creating in my thoughts and my emotions. That I'm drawing love. That I'm drawing abundance that I'm creating this masterpiece. I'm surrendering to my own divinity. I'm remembering the truth of who I am. So, that's it. That's my reading for you today. If you want to come in for a reading that's just yours alone, please feel free to come to the Byersdorfer Institute. I will post it, a link to it here in just a little bit and try to share it out. Come into the Byersdorfer Institute completely free for about an hour. However long it takes, I'll stick with you and I'll give you some free card readings today. So, at noon, Eastern time. Okay, so let's go into the playground. Christine, I have been seeing myself looking down a rabbit hole and reaching out to the fellow bunnies to come out. <laughs> 
I, it has been a reoccurring vision for a couple of months. That's very, very cool. Just keep helping those rabbits come out. Let's get rid of fear on the planet, right? Try and create something from that. Okay, so we, we're right back where we started. So you guys, Carol Ann, I mean it. I'm so happy to have you on the show today. It's The two of us are like, there's definitely a sisterhood and a lot of... A lot of synchronicities, a lot of like, we're, we go, we've been through the same kind of loss. So I think that creates a bond, doesn't it? So the same kind of loss and the same kind of found. <laughs> lost and found. I lost him and then I found him. What a powerful place to be. Go ahead and put your feet on the floor if you're ready. If you'd like to go into a quick meditation, let's clear out some negative energy. Let me help you get completely clear so you can see the world differently. Okay, I'm going to help you find your kaleidoscope today. So go ahead and get your feet grounded and I'm envisioning roots coming out of each one of you, out of your feet and down deeply into the earth so you can be safely rooted, planted, grounded. Drawing in a big breath and that divine energy. Nice. Let's get you all centered. We're going to center our energy together. So I'd love for you to take a big breath. And as you do, envision, tell your ego to just step aside for a second. Say it out loud. Nobody's listening. All right, ego, step aside. I'm going into meditation. Take a break, ego. Go take a rest. Let's go into higher self land. Let's bring out that beautiful powerhouse child inside of you that is so good at creating miracles and manifesting. Manifesting your most precious desires. What is it that you truly want to create today? And we're going to step into this beautiful little garden again. I'm going to turn the camera. And just listen quietly. You can look at the garden or you can close your eyes, whatever's less distracting to you. And just listen and, and play along for a few minutes. Allow your higher self the, the space, that beautiful creator, okay? You can even envision yourself as a child today. That would be really powerful. Well, let's go. <coughs> So I would love for you to rest into this, to let your body just completely relax, surrendering to your own divinity today, just as the card said, I am a divine being of light, stepping out of that physical form, allowing your higher self to join me in this beautiful garden today. Take a big breath, fill your heart space. Create that bubble of protection around yourself. Archangel Michael is right there to help you. Archangel Raphael is here for healing for anyone that needs it. And we're calling in Archangel Raziel today for wisdom, for the ability to help us to navigate through these crazy waters right now. Metatron. Metatron loves to join us with that sacred geometry, wisdom. We're calling in all of your angels and your guides. They're encircling you right now. I can feel the warmth around us. Your ancestors, those who are with you for your highest of good, we call them in today. Let's call in the entire entourage. And as you take that beautiful entourage with you, you can step up into the garden. If you, there's someone waiting there to usher you in. If you'd like to get a nice hug, you can do that. I heard a big welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for coming back today. For taking the time to join us. To be in spirit form for a little while. To give yourself a break. We love it when you take time to take care of yourself. Big breath. Take a few good cleansing breaths into your heart space just fill your lungs and hold it for just a little bit taking that dive a little bit deeper nice and relaxed easy on the body allowing source energy to come in right down over the top of your head Allowing for a perfect clearing of all of that negative energy, releasing fear. Anything that comes from fear, we're releasing today. Severing any cords or attachments. 
any earthbound spirits that may be still around anyone here in this gathering we're asking to have them those cords severed and released taken into the light those loved ones that need to go further into healing we're asking to have them taken into healing too to come back to us feeling strong I always allow for Steve to go back into deeper healing. He's very good about that. At first he wasn't. <laughs> At first he fought it, but he he really expanded and grew from those healings. So I want him to have everything. I want him to feel completely healed. No more pains, no more worries. I feel his energy here now. I hope you're feeling that. He's showing you, showing you how beautiful it is what it's like. Beautiful energy. We never die. It's just a re return to a state that feels natural and comfortable. There's no fear. So as your body's receiving this clearing energy, go off into that garden, find a place, find an activity, whatever you'd like to do sliding over waterfalls, chasing those little bunny rabbits. <laughs> I see a little white rabbit with a timepiece hopping through. Let's go see where that rabbit wants to take us, right down into that rabbit hole, where the whole beautiful kingdom opens up to us, the most beautiful place that we've ever been. What do you see there? Smiling cats and people in top hats. It's one of my favorite stories. Glad, glad you're back, Sue. Just relax as much as you can. We're going off into meditation. We're in a beautiful garden right now. So take a couple big breaths and ground your energy. <clears throat> Allow yourself to feel at peace for just a few minutes. Tell that ego to step aside. Take a break. Just be easy for a few minutes. Source energy is coming down over your crown, pouring healing energy, clearing energy down through into your third eye, opening you up to your truth, clearing away the clutter, taking away those misbeliefs, those fears, anything that has, comes from fear, removing that today. Allow yourself to relax into it. Each one of your chakras being cleansed, cleared, opened up, spinning perfectly, allowing you to feel your energy come back. Big breath into the heart space. Energy is just pouring down through the third eye, going down through the throat, into the heart. <coughs> if you feel the need to yawn or clear your throat, <coughs> excuse me, there is <coughs> clearing energy hitting the throat chakra right now. Big yawns if you need to. And what are you doing in that garden as you're relaxing? I see some of you actually planting flowers. Beautiful flowers, and it's easy work. We don't have to work in this garden, but some of us choose to. We like to. We go back into our old, our favorite pastimes. So if you love to plant gardens, it's easier here than you can imagine. You never run out of energy. The plants grow instantly. You place the seeds, and they grow. Go ahead and plant whatever you like. What are your favorite flowers? Create a whole garden full of wildflowers or sunflowers or daisies, pansies, gladiolas, all of them. Willow trees hanging down over, creating shade. Beautiful little lights everywhere. It's like a twinkly light forest of fairy lights. <laughs> There, some energy just lifted off of the throat for whoever did that. Thank you. Still holding energy, moving on down into the heart. Lots of healing going on, lots of clearing. Helping that body to work more efficiently, opening you up, allowing for your adrenals to get what they need. Your thyroid gland, all those glands are getting some extra work right now if you feel tired. Let's work on those glands. Working on the liver, cleaning it, cleansing. The kidneys, the bladder, the heart, the brain, the eyes, 
You see work going on all through the bodies right now. The muscles, the joints, taking care of that pain when you move, helping with the inflammation, clearing it away. The cells, the blood, the lungs, the bones, the ligaments, the shoulders, all of it, the feet. I see you just lighting up. Angels are so busily working on you. So as they're doing that, it's easy. Just It's easy work. Hydrate your body good. Take good care of yourself. They're reminding you. And be easy in the garden. Take a break from it all sometimes. Give yourself that rest. <clears throat> That's how we get out of 3D right now. I know we're still stuck in it physically. But they're reminding us that we can step out of this 3D reality whenever we like and go off into our own little fantasy world. Releasing the body, stepping out, telling that ego to step aside. And sometimes you can bring the ego along for vacation. <coughs> Retraining the ego. That's okay too. I see a beautiful tree, a circle of trees. Let's gather there for just a few moments by a big raging fire. We've got this this bonfire built and you can toast marshmallows or hot dogs or hamburgers or <laughs> whatever you like there. You can just have a, a little barbecue right there around that fire if you'd like. Just gathering and laughing together for a little while. Soul family. Just to feel, feel what, how good it is to be with those who are not going to judge you. They only love. How does that feel to you? Hmm. Nice. Feeling your peace today. Thank you for joining me in this. <clears throat> Still clearing through the body, down through the heart and the solar plexus. Into the belly, that third or the second chakra, sacral creating a, a nice, healthy, clear space, clearing away negative energies from past relationships, opening you up to your creativity. Brand new inspirations today. <clears throat> I'm interested to see what you come up with. Down into the root, down your legs, down your feet, <clears throat> through the ground, through those beautiful roots, Keep on playing. Keep on enjoying yourself just a little bit longer. You can swing as high as you'd like. You can call in your dragon. <clears throat> so much clearing going on. This is very good today. Call in your dragon. Call in your flying animals. Call in your pegasus. Whatever you've always dreamt of. Imagine yourself with wings. Fly higher and higher into the sky. Let's go all the way to the moon. My little child is enjoying this so much, creating beautiful things in this garden. And that energy has gone down into the center of the earth and it's coming back up through the feet, all the way up through the body, through every cell, cleansing, cleaning, purifying, strengthening, reminding you of the truth of who you are. The angels are telling you to call on them anytime, anytime, day or night. When things start getting scary, please call on your angels, reminding you that they're always there for you. And now as the energy fills your body and you've got this perfect, clear vessel, I'd love for you to call that higher self, that inner child to come back out of the garden, come back into your heart space, breathe them in deeply. They're happy and content now that they've had this playtime. They're ready to come back to bring you that joy. Breathe them in. Beautiful. Archangel Raphael is there to seal up any, finish up any healing. Some of you will have continued healing, so he's promising you that he'll stay as long as needed. 
Archangel Michael is wrapping you in a bubble of protection as you go through your day. Telling you, you only have to have whatever enters, whatever leaves is completely up to you. You are in control, reminding you of your strength. And that he's always there to help you when you need any cords or attachments. Severed or released, he's always there. Whenever you feel that heavy, crazy energy, please ask for help. And as you come back into the physical, if there are any concerns, anyone that you want to send healing to, let's do so for about 30 seconds. I'm going to get quiet. Focus that energy out wherever it's needed. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for joining me in that. Healing all the way around the planet. A lifting of this heavy energy. That more and more might wake up to the truth of who they are. That's what I want. <laughs> so as you're coming back up out, easy, wiggling, being more in the physical, coming back to yourself, you can join me again. I hope that you enjoyed that quiet time in the garden today. It's very nice. It's rainy. The rain started coming down solidly during our meditation, so it kind of played into it. It's been very peaceful here today. It sound, feels like it's just going to be a rainforest kind of day here. Rain, rain, rain. I may get the umbrella out and just enjoy it. Let's take a nice walk in it. There's no more thunder. It's safe now. You guys take good care of yourselves today. Enjoy your day. Get out there and do something beautiful. Join us. If you want a card reading, join me at noon. On the Buyer Store for Institute, it is at buy. Well, it's on the Facebook page, so you can find it at, at just search Buyer Store for Institute. You'll find it. By the time you get through B E Y E R S, you'll probably find Buyer Store for Institute. <laughs> it's the longest name. Sorry, you get used to it after a while. Trust me. So enjoy your day today, you guys. Enjoy it. There's nothing. There's nothing that's gonna that can overtake you. You're so powerful. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Carolina. Mm. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for being here today. Be good to yourselves. Take good care of yourselves. Right now, you've had a lot of uh, clearing energy, healing energy, grounding. So it's a good time to have a bite of something sweet, maybe. A little bit of fruit. I always say chocolate, but you can have a little fruit and have a big glass of water. Ground that energy. Take good care of your beautiful tree self. That's who you are. Trees need a lot of water, so drink a lot of water today. Take good care. I love you guys. See you again shortly. Bye for now.